Welcome to this week's edition of Good Books Radio. Audiobooks.com is the chief underwriter for Good Books Radio, which is produced by UTRGV Media Services for Rio Grande Valley Public Radio. And now, here's your host, Dr. John Cook. Welcome once again to another edition of Good Books Radio. I'm your host, Dr. John Cook. Normally, Good Books Radio is a nonfiction program, but today, in honor of the holidays, we're sponsoring two fiction works by St. Martin's Press. And the first author is with me right now. Her name is Nancy Nagel. She's a USA Today best-selling author, and she whips up small-town love stories with a dash of suspense and a whole lot of heart. Now, happily retired, she devotes her time to writing, antiquing, and the occasional spa day with friends. Her books include Christmas Joy, Dear Santa, and Hope at Christmas, a native of Virginia Beach. She currently calls North Carolina home. And we're going to be talking with her today about a great book that I read this weekend called Dear Santa. Nancy, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no, this was fun. this was a fun read. I read, I read it cover to cover in one day, and I just think it was a great story. And it's set in um, in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Is that the part of North Carolina that you call home now? No, it's not. I'm actually in Central North Carolina, uh, not far oh, okay. from Salem. But I grew okay. up in Virginia Beach, and because mm-hmm. Virginia Beach was such a big tourist town. We all escaped to the Outer Banks <laughs> for mm-hmm. our summer fun. So I have a, a big love for the Outer Banks, and uh, this this little town of Pleasant Sands is just an imaginary town right along that area around Manio, Nags Head, and Buxton, all up and down that area. So um, anybody that's been to the Outer Banks, I think will feel right at home in Pleasant Sands. Yeah. And close to Kitty Hawk, according to the book, right? <laughs> that is right, exactly. Yeah. Donkey's Ridge, yes. <laughs> yeah. This is a great story, and the protagonist is Angela Carson. She's like uh, a third generation of a family that has a Christmas store on the beach that was founded by her great great grandmother, grand- grandfather, uh, ran the lighthouse. Great great grandmother, who discovered that she could sell um, handmade ornaments. And that became um, the the store Heart of Christmas, and oh, yeah, she has I love that. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful story, and I I actually am familiar with a a Christmas store near the beach myself because I spent about twelve years in St. Augustine, Florida, and there was one of these Christmas stores that sold Christmas and uh, mem- memorabilia and ornaments and so on year round, just like the one in your story. Uh, so I, I love this uh, uh, aspect of it. Now, Angela is single. Uh, she devotes all of her time to the store, Heart of Christmas. She has a sister who's married, Marie, an older sister, who's married to a wonderful man named Brad and has a delightful five-year-old named Chrissy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, and it's funny how those uh, wonderful Christmas shops seem to pop up along the coast, you know, the year-round mm-hmm. ones. I think it's really interesting. and. And it was one of the reasons I picked that as part of the holiday holiday story. Um, there's one in North Carolina down in Calabash that's the same mm-hmm. way. It just has lots of beautiful Christmas ornaments and you know, the villages and just high end beautiful things that are are things that you can hand down, you know, from one generation to the other. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the great things about this is the quality of the products that are for sale in the Christmas store. And, and the same is true of the one that I'm familiar with. It's like handmade stuff, high-quality uh, materials out of which they're made. And that's in direct contrast to the competition that gets introduced in this story, Christmas Galore, which is sort of the shiny trinket um, imported goods uh, Christmas uh, fair. Exactly. The story is a little bit of a holiday retelling of You've Got Mail, you know, the big mm-hmm. bad big store coming against a small guy. Um, and it was really fun to write that contrast, especially when mm-hmm. you talk about Christmas uh, ornaments and, and things like that, that some people are thinking it's just to decorate and other people are truly treasuring little memories that they're trying to build tradition around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's so important and, and part of the Christmas season that we all think about very much. I love the fact that at the beginning of each chapter, there's a little something to, uh, to be kind of thought-provoking. Several of them are letters to Santa, and then uh, others uh, reflect Angela's desire to share uh, trivia about Pleasant Sands, North Carolina. But the first two chapters are letters to Santa from her niece, Chrissy. And the first one, 
in chapter one says, hey, there's a tree in my room, so you can come up and deliver the presents there, Santa, because Daddy wakes up too late. <laughs> and then in chapter two, Chrissy's letter says, I'm sorry about the first letter saying deliver to my room, because Daddy says that's bossy. <laughs> <laughs> I There's something delightful about that heart. childlike spirit, isn't there? I know, I know. It just makes your heart sing and your eyes twinkle with tears, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, I don't want to. I don't want to reveal the end of the story for sure, but um, the 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 crux of this becomes when the conflict emerges between Angela, who owns this great Heart of Christmas store, and Jeff, who owns the Christmas galore. Um, imported sparkles and a uh, mega store uh, kind of place, right? Right. Yes, yes, it does. You know, it uh, he's so, got, um, inspires, he, it, go I was going to say it inspires a little bit of a challenge, too, between the two in the different ways they attack things. And, uh, you know, she's struggling and really trying. It's her last-ditch effort to keep the store open, and she's kind of at the go-or-no-go spot. And she's even, you know, invested in being able to put together this snow village and trying to bring people in to build, you know, uh, snow castles and, and enjoy some snowy weather, you know, down on the beach. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he has, you know, like a big snowball fight. So their contrast is kind of continual through the whole story. Yeah. And, and an interesting aspect of this, because he pretty much is all business and everything is about the marketing analysis and you know, what's the best place to locate their next big mega store to shut out the mom and pop shops because they want to gain all the profits. Um, his mother, who has been an aggressive businesswoman, insisted on this location in Pleasant Sands, which is which didn't fit their marketing model. But Pleasant Sands was important to her, wasn't it? It sure was. Very personal reason and um, you know, a lot of family arc in that story around that particular plot line. Mm-hmm. And, and both families have interesting traditions. Uh, uh, Angela is holding the store open in part because her mother died very early in her life, and her grandmother, Mama Grace, took her on, and she worked in the store since she was very young. Uh, there's a great part in the beginning about uh, when they're going to have Thanksgiving dinner, and She has Mama Grace's secret recipe for oyster dressing for the turkey that she brings over to her sister's house. Um, Mm -hmm. So she has all this. She has all this warm, wonderful family tradition going on. And and later in the story, you realize that she's had things on the shelf in the Christmas store that haven't sold for years and years, but they're treasures because some artisan made such a beautiful piece. And Jeff is the let's move the merchandise when it looks like that's what there is to sell. So the contrast is stark. (laughs) It sure is. Right down to the uh, little finger lights when he sees that they were, they're they wearing them in the parade. You know, he quickly picks up the phone. Hey, move those to the checkout. <laughs> He's not going to And it works, right? Something. It did work. <laughs> well, that's part of what uh, uh, makes this interesting is because it, it starts out looking like, and especially to Angela, that this is a cruel businessman who has no sense of spirit or or heart, warmth and heart and, and anything like that. And then um, his mom, who has a heart condition, has to be hospitalized. And she asked him to take on a task that he didn't know she did. And that was to answer letters to Dear Santa online. Yeah, yeah. And his first reaction is, you know, not to take it very seriously. You know, she'll, she'll be back in a day or two. She can handle it. Um, but, boy, he sure gets sucked in when he starts reading those heartfelt letters. Mm-hmm. And and that brings about an, an interesting transformation because he actually goes to the heart of Christmas, and of course Angela assumes he's spying on her, but he actually bought a gold ornament, engraved it for his mother, and recognized the charm of the little old Christmas store that was there. <clears throat> but when he tried to approach Angela about that and say there's something very charming and cute about it, she thought he was demeaning her store. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. she she definitely was feeling very threatened and, and wanting to protect her store. And she was definitely in mama bear mode, <laughs> trying to keep yeah. her alive. <laughs> mm-hmm. a, a beautiful part of this is when they encounter each other at the par- at the Christmas parade, and he's trying to make nice, and she just won't have it. And there's a public scene which embarrasses them both, 
which is not yeah. good for either store's business, right? Right, right, right. And who doesn't love a Christmas parade, right? And the whole town is there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, having this very public um, uh, con- confrontation in front of all those locals is not a good thing for either one, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a story that, that uh, has a lot of wonderful twists and turns to it. Some of it's foreshadowed in, in the conversations that go on uh, during the course of the story. And, I, and again, I won't reveal everything that goes on in the end because it's, it's a nice ending. It's a happy ending, as you would expect from a good Christmas story. Um, <laughs> but I, I really love the inscription up front uh, in the book that said, let your traditions remain strong and may a bit of childhood innocence find its way into your holiday season this year, wishing you and your loved ones a Merry Christmas. The Christmas spirit is important to you, isn't it? Oh, very important to me. And I think that, you know, it, it's easy to get caught up in the spending and just how busy we are. You know, every, we're living four times the speed of our ancestors, right? And, it, and it's mm-hmm. easy to, to let those little traditions go by, you know, remembering that putting up that one special ornament, you know, is, is special to you or, or taking the time to take cookies to a friend or just little things like that. I think it's important for us to just take a breath, take a step, and and hold on to those little traditions that mean so so much. Mm-hmm. So this is this is your third Christmas book. <laughs> are there more in the works? There are more in the works. Um, I've got uh, three Christmas books with St. Martin's Press so far, and two mm-hmm. more to come. So Christmas Angels has just been turned in. And that'll be out next October. Really excited about that. And it is not set on the coast. This one is set in the mountains of North Carolina. So I have been writing snowy mountain scenes, and that has been just lush, especially since we've had some significant snow here in North Carolina <laughs> recently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm well, excited to see that. And I've mm-hmm. got 25 other books out, and they're all set in small towns and uh, – you go, you'll find that um, regardless of which books you pick up, it's pretty much guaranteed a, a happy ending and a story of hope and community and, and traditions um, because those are the things that make me happy. It makes me feel full, and I hope to share those things with other people. Yeah, and, and just speaking as a, a Christmas movie junkie, I have to ask, is this one going to be turned into a screenplay because it reeks of a great Christmas movie? <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope so. I've got my fingers crossed. So Christmas Joy mm-hmm. and Hope at Christmas are both on the Hallmark channels uh, this year. Uh, Christmas in Evergreen, I did the novelization for that movie. Um, and I'm also doing the novelization for Christmas in Evergreen Letters to Santa. And those are all on Hallmark. So uh, they've got Dear Santa in their hands, and they're waiting on Christmas Angels too. So I've got my fingers crossed that I'll get that phone call sometime first quarter that they're going to be working on those too but uh, i've never met a hallmark movie i didn't like so (laughs) (laughs) a girl can dream (laughs) well i have some some that i play every year uh uh, recordings of them uh, because i just can't miss those but i do love the fact that the hallmark channel runs christmas movies all during the month and uh, they're all they're all great stories, and I'm glad that you're a part of that. And I really do think that Dear Santa would make another great Hallmark Christmas movie. And I I, uh, I enjoyed it, and I think it's a wonderful a wonderful tale, start to finish. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It makes me just feel very happy inside to hear that. Mm-hmm. And that's from St. Martin's Press, y'all. It's by Nancy Nagel. It's called Dear Santa. And if you haven't gotten that one last-minute Christmas gift, this might be the perfect one. Uh, I remind our listeners, if you don't hear our regularly scheduled broadcast, you can catch up with us on our YouTube channel at Good Books Radio Strong and Cook. We also have a Facebook page, Good Books Radio. Thanks for listening. Make it a great day, and happy holidays.
We're continuing now with our special Christmas edition of Good Books Radio with a second St. Martin's novel about Christmas. And with me is the second novelist, Anita Hughes, who has skillfully crafted a series of novels that combine the adventure of dazzling location, swoon-worthy romance, and the magic and charm of Christmas time. It's been featured in Cosmopolitan, In Style, Martha Stewart Weddings, Pop Sugar, and many more with the biggest names in women's fiction. In this novel, Christmas at the Chalet, she will once again pull at readers' heartstrings, entangling them in a world of fashion where two heroines must confront not only their past, but also themselves. Set in the glamorous Swiss Alps, this heartfelt love story is essential for keeping cozy and warm during the holiday season. That's a nice uh, uh, promo, but welcome to the program, Miss Hughes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me. I, I really you know, did, appreciate it. it. It is a delightful read, uh, and I can see that you've been a very productive author. You're also the author of Christmas in London, Christmas in Paris, and a number of other titles that don't relate to Christmas, but Christmas in special locations seem to have a special appeal for you. Yeah, I love the Christmas season, and I love writing the Christmas books because you can make them a little bit more whimsical, um, obviously very romantic, and just have a little bit of that Christmas magic in them, and that's, that's really fun to write. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this one, Christmas at the Chalet, is set in San Moritz, which is a, a ski resort, apparently a playground of the rich and famous. Is that a, a fair statement? Yeah, be- very much so. You know, it's in the Swiss Alps. It's, it's been there since um, since about 1900, actually, that it became very popular with the, the jet, well, before the jet set, <laughs> before they were jets. Um, but it is mm-hmm. definitely the, the playground of the jet set. Uh huh. Now, the primary protagonist is Felicity Grant, and she has a bridal gown design business, and they've decided to do a, a, a show, a fashion show, in St. Moritz between Christmas and New Year's with her partner, Raj Patel. Right. I mean, I always, when, when I first imagined this book in my head, you know, there's weddings are obviously sort of a summer thing, but, um, A lot of people love to get married at Christmas because it's very romantic and because, you know, it's wonderful for the anniversaries and especially for destination weddings. They're very popular. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, wedding gowns would look so beautiful, you know, with a snowy backdrop and what a wonderful place to have a fashion show with, you know, in a beautiful snowy alpine setting. So that's sort of how I started thinking about the whole book. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and, and Switzerland is a unique place. I don't, I don't know it very well. I had a bus tour between Italy and France, and we stopped off in Geneva briefly. And there's it, just something different about the, the, the feel of people who are Swiss. I'm, I'm not even sure how to articulate that. I think it's, it's always been a very safe country, a very cultured country. I think they're very pleased with themselves. Um, you know, Switzerland has everything. It has three languages. It has lakes. It has... Um, cities and you know wonderful food and um, great health care and so I think that it's 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 a magical place sort of for many people it doesn't have a lot of the other problems that the world has and and mm-hmm. it has just the most breathtaking scenery uh, all you know all yeah. of it Lake Lake Geneva and, and the Alps and wonderful you know, you mentioned the food. I the only thing I had trouble believing was that these models ate so well during that week, uh, <laughs> chocolates and cheese all the time. <laughs> well, um, it was just it was just one week. They'll 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 die when they get home. But um, but <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of a, a big lover of food and especially of describing them in books because you know it's kind of fun. When I get hungry when I write, I just like to imagine all the good food. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, the the story uh, of Felicity Grant, who's a, who's a very young and ambitious fashion designer. She's in her late twenties, maybe approaching thirty, and she has a boyfriend she's had for six years. And the day before she leaves for Switzerland, um, they had a little disagreement uh, because she was expecting an engagement ring, and instead he gave her a spa day, which sparked a little bit of upset. Right. Right. Yeah, because I think, you know, it, um, it is romance and, and I think we all want to balance, want balanced lives. And while career is extremely important, even for, 
you know, ambitious people, so is love and, and marriage and children, you know, and, and sort of building a life. And so she was kind of ready for that, for all that part. And, you know, they'd been together for six years, so she sort of thought he was too. And, mm -hmm. um, and yes, that's what sparks the, the disagreement. Mm -hmm. So she's off to Switzerland with her partner, Raj, who's a friend of Adam's, the, the boyfriend. Uh, but there's another plot line here, and one of her star models, Nell, has parents that won't speak to each other. She's about to get married herself, and they won't both be at the same wedding because they can't stand to be around each other. And that provides a lot of entertainment and, and interesting uh, uh, manipulations on the part of Nell. I, I really enjoyed writing that plot line because I think it's always fun to, um, you know, because we kind of look back at the parents' marriage and... It's, it's always fun and interesting to see people fall in love and then see what gets in the way of, of kind of a perfect, you know, fairy tale life and, and how to solve that because relationships are, you know, complicated even in the, even in the people who are most in love and, um, you know, can you rise above certain things or are some things deal breakers? And, yeah, I really mm -hmm. enjoyed writing that. I think my readers have really responded to that plot line. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a great storyline, and Nell is doing her best to see what she can do to have them both be at her wedding. Her father insists that it just raises his blood pressure to be around her her mom, his ex-wife, and she insists that she won't be in the same room with him. And so Nell spends a lot of time trying to figure out what broke them up because the truth is, as she goes through the week, she discovers that they had fallen madly in love in San Moritz where they met each other. It's Exactly. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, right. Right. Where you know she meets her her father for for um, for drinks one night, and and that's how we unravel their whole story. And so I I think it's just very interesting that you know they started right there, and and something happened that just kind of derailed them. And but was it you know really true love? And especially with Nell starting on her own journey at the moment of, you know, really, really being in love, that she and her fiancé are, are deeply in love, you know, she might wonder, can something like that happen to them? And, you know, she really wants her parents, obviously, to be there for her wedding because that's extremely mm -hmm. important to her. So that, well, that's the nail plot line. There's a mystery there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. That's the nail plot line, and uh, that, that resolution will be uh, a delight to the readers of your novel, and we certainly won't give that away. Um, uh, returning to Felicity for a moment, she has an added complication because she thinks that she can make it up to Adam for the fight they had when he didn't give her an engagement ring. Um, she's uh, at various times during the the day she's in places where she has no cell re uh, reception, and so she can't call him and she can't text him. Um, meanwhile, she has a nasty fall, and a handsome young doctor who happens to be in town taking care of his father, who's usually in another city, Zurich, I believe. Um, picks her up and carries her to her room and takes care of her twisted ankle and her concussion. Um, and that makes the, the gossip in the uh, social media, which adds an extra difficulty for Felicity with her trying to repair her relationship with Adam. Right, yes. There is the handsome, uh, mysterious young doctor. And, uh, you know, she's... she's invested six years of her, her life in this relationship and feels like it's, you know, not going anywhere. And, and it's nice to have somebody to talk about it with and, and, you know, sort of feelings develop and it's Christmas and it's a bit magical up there. So you just never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, novel is, is a delightful read. I, I can see it becoming a, a Christmas movie someday, uh, and, I, and I hope that works out for you. Um, but it's got romance. It's got uh, the story about the gorgeous fashion show. Uh, the scenery of the Swiss Alps is really described, along with the delicious food, and it creates a sense of the importance of love and forgiveness, and and even creating your own miracles. Uh, at this at this holiday season, for that reason, it's such a delightful read. Thank you. I'm I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. I I really enjoyed writing it, and 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 yeah, I've gotten some great feedback. It's 
definitely transports mm-hmm. people to to the Swiss Alps. So close. Fantastic, fantastic. And I understand you're at work on your next novel in Dana Point, California, right now. Is that right? Yes, I have another Christmas book coming out next year called Christmas in Vermont. Um, wow, okay. A little, little closer to home, but also snowy and and a bit of magic and and all sorts of fun romance happening in Vermont. Uh, Christmas in Vermont makes me think of Bing Crosby's White Christmas. That's yeah, great. Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, good luck with that one as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Uh, I thank you for your time on this on this book and for the quality of the story within. I remind our listeners, if you don't hear our regularly scheduled broadcast on public radio, you can catch up with us on our YouTube channel, Good Books Radio, Strong and Cook. We also have a Facebook page, Good Books Radio. Thanks for listening. Happy, healthy holiday season.